so I have been anxiously awaiting to do this book review with you right here. Restless Heart by best New York Times bestseller Winona Judd. And I'm going to read the back cover to you again tonight. Read you a little bit of the insert flaps. And then guess what? We've got a lot of paper clips to cover. Like a great country song, Restless Heart tells a charming story with the undercurrents of hope and longing. Winona Judd delivers a fast-paced and delightful read. Just don't miss it, says New York Times bestseller author Lisa Kalepas. She was about to blow her big chance. The crowd settled down, watching her and Destiny sensed a ripple of disappointment that might very well kill the earlier buzz. She blinked and tried to think of something clever to say. Don't say anything. Just sing. Good idea. But her fingers were frozen on the guitar strings and her voice seemed to have taken a sudden leave of absence. A hush fell oh, fallen over the crowd. Oh, this was not good. Destiny dove into a song, gaining her strength and confidence when she had the whole room singing along, and when she met with more of the wild cheers, she learned that connecting with her audience on a personal level, level was crucial. The most amazing thing that she was being completely honest and simply herself. And they liked her incredible the rest of the performance flew by and before she knew it she was thinking thanking the band for in the audience to a thunderous round of applause she stepped down from the stage her knees still felt a little bit wobbly and her heart pounded like a mad but she felt good great she planted a big smile on her face and then looked around for Seth now if you were on my Facebook account I said I wanted to hit Seth over the head with a cast iron skillet. That's an old thing that my grandma would say when she'd get mad at my grandpa, that she liked to hit him with a cast iron skillet. She never did. She'd threaten it, but she never would. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the little insert backings to you. I just wanted to tell you, I found this book at Goodwill, and it was one of my best finds ever. That's how I advertise this book. Anyway, let me read this inside here. From the New York Times bestseller author and music superstar Winona Judds comes a novel that sings with authenticity, a story of love and sacrifice and putting your heart on the line. Are you ready, Destiny Heart? Great name, by the way. You're, you even sound like a star. Not surprising to anyone. Who knows her? Destiny Heart's career starts with a dare, and she isn't someone who backs down from a challenge. Destiny is determined, elder daughter of an unyielding retired Air Force colonel and in one on-the-move military family. And she, has, she and her younger sister, Grace, have never understood the concept of roots. But Destiny holds on to the one real constant she has ever known, a talent for singing and a passion for performing. No matter how big the dreams are for Destiny, she's determined to live up to her name and follow her fate. She has the cool, sexy sound. She has the hard, driving ambition. All she needs is the break to make it happen. When it comes, she grabs it. And she's taking it on the road. Destiny Heart is going to be a star. But with that exhilarating rush of success comes with a price. And a battle to recapture the tradition that were her foundation. Struggling to reconnect with the things that matter most, Destiny is putting an unexpected spin on her own career, one that will redirect her life in ways she never imagined. Written with a genuine heart and an all-experienced all voice, Winona Judd's debut novel is a celebration of family and friends of love and loss, of success and surrender, and of the woman's inspiring path of self-discovery. So, she's written a little preference in here, and I want to share it with you. It says at the top, Wynonna Judd. Dear friends, I was blessed when I fell into music as a young woman. Before, I'd been an independent, unconventional, feeling out of step with the world around me. When I found music, I knew I found the place where I belonged, but being famous at 18 isn't easy, and the chaos of fame can be overwhelming. My life is played on a stage for everyone to see, good and bad. Every choice lit with a spotlight. 
Restless Heart is a story of another woman called to music at a young age. Destiny Heart discovers her path on a dare. A prank draws her to sing before an audience for the first time, and in that moment, Destiny's life is altered. Success is elusive, and years in Nashville, isolated from her family and friends, have all taken a toll on Destiny. And that's when Seth walks back into her life. The Boy Next Door Seth has always been Destiny's friend, but reuniting as adults brings the two of them closer than ever before. Close enough that now Destiny has to choose the man who makes her heart sing or the singing career that makes her feeling alive. I wanted to tell a story of a young woman with her life unfolding before her, facing incredible challenges and incredible opportunities and making good decisions. A story of dreams and love, of family and friendships, of reaching for the stars and keeping your feet on the ground. Enjoy. Winona. Okay. Now we're going to do the acknowledgement and then we're going to hit very hard the paper clips. Acknowledgement. I'd like to thank Kara Welsh, the NAL Publishing, another one of my projects, Laura Silifi for her fantastic editing work, Mel Berger, my WME library agent for always making the right things happen, and Luann McLean for all of her immense help in creating such an interesting, talented, driven, and compassionate character, Destiny Hart. Okay, now where does the first paper clip happen? On page seven. Now, why did I have, okay. A long list of I dare you's. Destiny played through her brain like a slideshow. Cliff dive, polar plunge, bungee jump, worm eating, never again. V vine swinging, gate crashing. The list was endless. And now this. Destiny, are you ready? Rex asked. The slideshow in her head shut off and Destiny sit, nodded, yes, sir. A hush fell over the crowd and Destiny began to sing. I hope to really wet your whistle to make you want to go search for this book. It's one that I know when you read it, you won't regret that you read it. And more importantly, that you will enjoy. My next paper clip comes in at page 43. When Seth's gaze dropped to her mouth, she wondered for a wild moment if he was going to kiss her. The idea so unnerved her that she jerked her head back and tumbled from her knees to her butt, nearly landing on the poor recovering Mike. He gave a startled bark, and she scooped him up into her lap and gave him a pat on his head. Seth cleared his throat. So why were you upset with Mike? Because he's not supposed to be here. He showed up as a stray, and pets aren't allowed, and I know my daddy raised me not to break the rules, but I was afraid that take Mike to a shelter. He was only... He has a face only a mother could love, and that thought of... She shook her head. Anyway, he came along with me when I just needed him the most. Seth seemed to be contemplating that. When things like that happen, I sometimes think that there is a little divine intervention at work. He pushed it to his feet and then offered a warm, firm grip, grasp to pull her up, still clutching the dog under one arm. Let's be friends, okay, little guy? He had the strong, calloused hands of hard-working athlete when she noticed him scratch Mike's behind the ears. She fully expected her cranky dog to growl again, but he surprised her by nudging Seth's hand for more. Guess you want him over, Seth grinned. Was there ever any doubt? Not at all. And she does find this dog, and she names him Mike. And her apartment building does not allow dogs, but she takes him in out of the kindness of her heart because she can't take him to the shelter. She just knows the inevitable would happen if she did. And God bless her for doing that. Okay. Next paper clip. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me we skipped a paper clip. We did. Uh, page 25. We're going to backtrack. Uh What happens when things go wrong? And they will. Things will get really trying, and you'll wish you had something to fall back on. 
no, I won't. Not me. I'm not taking the easy way out. I didn't mean. You didn't have to make things happen, Seth. Not sit back and wait for them to happen. Things happen if they're meant to or not, no matter what. I don't believe that. I think you make your own luck and you seal your own fate. So I need this to go full throttle or not at all. It's how I do things. Don't you get that? No, he didn't. Didn't get her. That hurt so badly that she left town the next morning without stopping over to say goodbye. In all their years of friendship, she'd always been able to count on him. Even when no one else seemed to lend moral support, Seth always had until he turned against her, along with the rest of the world, when she set out to find realize her dream. Then again, maybe she didn't get him either. After all, she didn't see why, after going away to college and getting into the world, that he'd ever want to return to a small town route. And he once be, dreamed of becoming a major league pl baseball player. Okay. Now back to where we were. It kind of gives you a, a feel of the relationship between destiny and... Um, I had a paper written. Here we go. Um, there's really two relationships to focus on when you read this book. The mom and the dad of Destiny and Grace. And the other I wish to focus on is Destiny and Seth. John and his daughter were so alike, therefore their relationship was troubled by the lack of communication and understanding. Destiny's mom and Seth, which is Destiny's boyfriend, um, share a similarity in fact that John took Sarah for granted all those years and just expected her to be there all the time. Seth, well, he thought Destiny loved the spotlight, fame, and fortune, but not him. And um, we're going to continue on with page 67. Looking at Seth, she wondered whether he was thinking the same thing. Uh-oh. What if? No, no way. Destiny knew not to hope for another toe-curling kiss, let alone anything more. Thanks again for kissing. I mean, coming. He grinned. You sure about that? Positive. Yet in her hurry, she put some distance between them. She stumbled. He steadied her, closing his hand around her waist. Oh, boy. For a couple of seconds as they stared at each other, it seemed as though the pause button had been pushed on a remote in time suspended. Then he leaned in, just as slender as footsteps, raced up the stairs. Just what in tarnation's going on here? Nessie looked up from Destiny to Seth. on a, Her, paint, her painted-on eyebrows shot toward her platinum hairline. Oh, I was just... Well, oh, was I interrupting something? Nothing like you're thinking, Destiny assured her. Seth eyed the broom. What are you doing with that thing? Protecting Destiny. At his raised eyebrows, she retorted. It was all I could find at short notice. I heard all kinds of commotion, including a very loud scream, and I thought I was coming to Destiny's rescue, but it doesn't look like she wants to be rescued. Not from you, anyway. Am I right, Sugar? No, you're not right, Destiny rolled her eyes. Nessie, that's not why I... Well, it's getting hotter in here than a two possums in a mailbox. Nessie jammed her thumb over her shoulder. I'll just see my way back downstairs and y'all get back to whatever y'all doing. Go on, tell her, Seth whispered in Destiny's ear. Tell me what? Nessie almost toppled sideways in her mile-high shoes and ready to use the broom as a cane. Destiny, I'm not going to budge from this spot till you tell me what's going on. Mandy skipped out on her final set tonight, and Max said that Ralph fi fired her. He wants me to take her place. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Nessie threw her broom into Seth's hands and uh, threw her arms around Destiny. I'm so happy for you, baby doll. She turned and hugged Seth as well. What was that for? He asked with a chuckle. Because you're as cute as a sack full of puppies, and it was all excuse anyway. As she turned back to Destiny. Listen, I'm going to be there tomorrow, even if I have to sh shut the shop down early. You don't have to do that. Are you kidding? I wouldn't miss this for the world. Let me know what time and I'll be there with bells on. I will. Destiny's wobbly smile didn't escape, escape Nessie, who patted her shoulder. I know you've got some nerves going on, but you'll do just fine. I hope so. She gave Seth gave Destiny a little nudge with a broom handle. Excuse me. Destiny rolled her eyes. Okay, coach. I know so. That's more like it. I knew I liked you, Nessie's gave Seth a wink and then turned back to Destiny. Girlfriend, I do believe that the tide is turning. Okay, I'll leave you two alone. That's right. I was just leaving. I'll walk you downstairs, Seth offered. Are you sure? Positive. He gave Destiny a quick squeeze. See you tomorrow night. Me too. Nessie started down the stairs. Oh, what am I going to wear? Something flashy for a change, Destiny called out after her and was rewarded with laughter from both, from Nessie and Seth. As she closed the door after them, she suddenly remembered that she and Seth were supposed to have a date tomorrow night. She hadn't even given any thought to what when Max told her she was scheduled to perform. 
Oh well, she had had to understand that her music came first. And if he didn't, well, she had her shot, and she was going to take it, just like he had told had himself told her. Mike followed her into the bedroom and hopped into the bed, watching her as if he sensed her, some inner turmoil. You know what's weird, Mike? He seemed to tilt his furry head. This started out ordinary, just like any other day, but you mark my words, from this day forward, everything is going to change. I can feel it in my bones. She just wished that she knew it was because of her career or Seth Caldwell. Okay, moving on. Page 80. Seeing the gleam in his eyes, she forgot all about the performance and Nick Novell and the business card she was holding. Then Seth asked, What's that in your hand? Then um, she opened her mouth to tell him, then closed it again, telling herself she might jinx it by talking about something that wasn't a done deal. Or was there some other reason she didn't want to tell Seth that she might be on the brink of something huge? Maybe you're afraid that he'll give you a reason to turn your back on your career, even now that you're on the brink of taking off. 24 hours ago, she would have said that was impossible, but 24 hours ago, she'd never been kissed by Seth Caldwell. I suppose you're too drained after that performance to let me take you out to celebrate, he asked. I definitely am, she looked at him in the eye, but we can go back to my place if you want. Oh, I won't. He broke into a slow grin, and she wondered what she'd just done. Okay. Page 98. If she gave 100% to her, her career, then what would be left over for Seth? And that's all you get from that one. Some of these paper clips are short and sweet, and some of them takes two or three pages, but it's worth the, the pages, trust me. Page 106. A condo is like a house. You don't have to do any maintenance. I know, I know. I want something with a front porch and a backyard and plenty of room to raise a family. But he hadn't said that. You're an old-fashioned guy, she said with a smile. Guess so. She nodded, and he could tell what she was thinking, that she was an old-fashioned girl. She didn't have to say it. He knew that. Tracy was a large part of an extended local family that went back generations, like her siblings. She probably intended to get married and settle down here. She had everything in common with Seth. Everything that destiny doesn't. He couldn't help think as he walked away slowly to his car. And yet opposites attract. Everyone knew that. They were both determined to make their work, make this work. There was no reason why it shouldn't. No reason at all. That was... That was what Seth had been telling himself anyway, every chance he got. Some days he honestly believed it. Today wasn't one of them. As he drove home listening to the radio, he knew this day was going to come very soon when Destiny's first single came blaring through the speakers. Then there would be no turning back. Heck, there was no turning back even now. He hoped that all her dreams came true. He really did. But as he felt as if she was slipping away from him before he even had a chance to explore his feelings for her. Talking to her on the phone for hours on end and helping her at first, but lately she seemed so busy recording studio during the day and performing at night that their conversations were short and bittersweet, leaving him longing for so much more. He had wanted to head to Nashville on several occasions, but they could never quite make their schedules mesh. At this point, he wanted to hold her in his arms so badly that it was a constant ache that simply would not subside. Would success change her? Would she forget all about him along the way? She was so young, so eager, so darn innocent in a lot of ways. She could easily be gobbled up alive by the wrong people. Seth clenched his jaw. He'd never, ever allow that to happen, not as long as he was around. What if you're not, though? And that part, I wanted to hit him over the head with a skillet, let me tell you. Because I was afraid of him and Miss Tracy getting close, which they do in a way. 
Again, he thought of Tracy. With her, it would be so easy. They could see each other any time they felt like it. They both have summers off. They even could drive back and forth to work together. She wasn't destiny. But destiny wasn't here. And I'll let you read a little bit more about Miss Tracy. Okay, page 126. He's happy for me, but he's worried too. Destiny realized with a pang, and there's nothing I can do about it unless I want to give up my dream or ask him to give up his. Okay, so they hire this uh, guitar player, and he's like a fast-moving train. So Seth sees this interaction. He's a little bit jealous, okay? He doesn't really know how to take it. He doesn't really know how to read it. So this is what comes of that exchange. For a moment, watching the exchange, Seth, sees, Seth was seized by pure doubt and insecurity. Hey, he your own advice there, Coach Max. Advice what? You know something? You're right. I grew up poor, but my father always reminded me that if we put all our pants on one leg at a time. You're damn straight, Seth tilted his head in Jesse's direction. Some pants are just tighter than others. That drew a chuck chuckle from Max and Seth joined in. Hearing the laughter, Destiny looked over and met his gaze, and her smile was tired around the corners, but all for him. It did funny things to his insides and lifted his spirits. We're going to move on. Page 140. I know you're there with me. She leaned close, captured his mouth with hers, and then placed her forehead against his. I miss you so much. Every second of the day that we're not together. I feel the same way. How are we going to keep doing this, Seth? Trust. You mean in fate because you... She began, but he put a fingertip to her mouth. Trust in us. It's the only way that long-distance relationships can survive. Well, then that's not a problem, is it? Not at all. Seth slid his fingertips across the bottom lip and then kissed her gently. He had such a simple, direct way of looking at things. She had hoped that it would be a lifeline and not their undoing. With a sigh, Destiny rested her head on his shoulder, savoring the solid muscle neath her cheek and steady heartbeat of his underneath the palm of her hand. She knew that she had to tuck these memories away and take them with her when she left, and that they couldn't sit around holding each other all day because they had a Thanksgiving dinner to get to. Okay. Okay, so this is a little bit now of the mom and dad, and uh, not a whole lot, but I loved this particular page. And to read more of this book, of course, you want to Go to your local bookstore. Go to your library. Ask for this book. Look for this book. You won't regret it. On page 151. On the opposite side of town, the hearts faced each other stubbornly across the breakfast table. Sarah, I just can't support something I believe is wrong. John th threaded his fingers through his short hair. You know that simply isn't me. And here's Sarah's response. Just how can you, pursuing a dream be wrong? It's not wrong if you go about it the right way, but the right way or your way, Sarah cut in. Those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive, you know. She knew he was trying to joke, but she failed to see the humor. She's your daughter, John. Everyone else in town is going to be there, and, and you really think that means everyone else in town loves her more than I do, Sarah? Well, no, you have, well, you sure have a funny way of showing it. It's not in me to stand back and watch my children make mistakes. Mistakes are all a part of life, John. Stop controlling and stop, start supporting her before it's too late. Please, just come to see her perform tonight. He shook his head. A hot wave of disappointment wa washed over Sarah. She pushed her chair back. Where are you going, he said with a single ed edge of panic in his voice that clawed at Sarah's heart. She clenched her fists and fought the urge to sit down again. Outside for some fresh air. I have some serious thinking to do. 
He didn't ask about what, and Sarah didn't offer. Maybe you should do the same, she advised and stepped out onto the deck. It wasn't fair. It was a holiday weekend, and the first time ever her entire family had been together in ages. Grace had found happiness in Nashville with her sister. Destiny's career was going well, and she was seeing Seth Caldwell. If only John Hart would come to his senses, all would be all right with Sarah's world. It shouldn't be this way, she whispered, and she tried to swallow the hot moisture gathering in her aching throat. While she knew what John's stubbornness was born of love, he had to learn that it couldn't always be this way or his way or the highway. Sarah gripped the railing harder and raised her face to the blue sky and with a silent prayer that her husband would learn that it's possible to bend without breaking. After all, I've been doing it for years, Sarah thought grimly. We're going to move to the next paper clip. Okay, Destiny's career isn't the only thing that's become between us. John, she looked at him with accusing eyes that made guilt settle like a lead ball in his gut. But since we're on the subject, she's an adult, and this is the path she's chosen. You need to let her be so she can be who she wants and not who you want her to be. The odds are stacked against her even now. Be realistic. She put her hands on her hips and looked straight at him in the eye. I don't want to be realistic. I want to dream with her, support her, shower her with praise and encouragement, like I should have been doing all along. That was page 159. Page 160. She hesitated then with quiet conviction, like you should have been doing all along. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, heaven forbid, she raised her chin with defiance. Well, guess what? The days you are over when you can tell me what to do. For once, this isn't all about you. He, too, was on his face, facing her, cold, hard fear pounding at his temples. What are you saying, Sarah? She blinked at him, and he wondered for a moment if she even knew. Then she said quietly, I'm tired of being everything you want me to be and not being myself. It's your world, and I'm just living in it. What the hell does that mean, he growled, even though he was deep down he knew. Figure it out. She left the room, and for a moment she slammed the door to the guest room. John started to follow her down the le hallway leading to the four bedrooms, two baths. Lining the walls were framed with pictures beginning with their wedding and progressing over the years. Sarah had been so pretty, so sweet. He could never quite get over why a girl like him, why a girl like him, why a girl like her had fallen for a guy like him. In the first place, every time he had left her for months on end, he worried that she would get tired of being gone, that someone better would come along and sweep her off her feet someone more deserving than him. Looking at the old photos, remembering what it had been like, John shook his head. There was a stark difference between the early pictures and the later ones, particularly at the girls' graduation. Sarah was still smiling, but John could see that some of the life had been sucked right out of her. Shaken, he who turned away. Still, I don't deserve this treatment, he grumbled underneath his breath and stomped down the hallway to the master bedroom. He wanted to slam the door, but controlled his anger. He ran to the water, stripped off his clothes, stepped into the stall, and stayed there for a long time. Though the hot water eased his aches and pains, he tasted the salt of the, on his tongue. Crying had always gotten a backhand from his father, and he learned early in life to control his emotions. His throat closed up now, and he, but he refused to let the tears flow. Okay. Page 174. Watching Destiny up there singing, Seth had tears in his eyes. If he'd held a last shred of doubt where she was headed or what she was meant to him, it was gone. Why in the world did it take him so long to figure out that he was in love with her? The realization couldn't have come at a worse time, and he didn't know what to, if anything, to do about it. He tried to tell her backstage, but the timing wasn't right. The timing between them had never seemed right. They lived in separate cities and vastly different dreams, and they might possibly build some kind of life together was against all odds. Thank you all so much, Destiny called out over the thunderous applause and then waved her hand in appreciation arc toward her band. She was about to walk off the stage when Rex Miller stopped her. Destiny, that was quite a performance, and you wrote that song yourself, didn't you? Sure did. Songwriting is my passion. 
I love the stories that country music tells. Music can take you back to a place in time and it's an instant. Well, if that is the case, Destiny, you might be just writing about this moment someday because we happen to have a special surprise in store for you. Seth frowned. What was he talking about? Judging by the expression on Destiny's face, she didn't have a clue either. Seth looked at Sarah behind him. She shrugged, and then like everyone else, they turned their attention toward the stage and waited. Maybe the mayor was going to give Destiny the key to the city or something. Miranda Shepard came out on stage, smiling broadly, and accepted the mic from Rex. Destiny, I got a phone call from Tammy Turner just before the show tonight. Y'all know who she is, right? The crowd ro roared with approval for one of the biggest names in country music today. It seems like Tammy saw you perform downtown in Nashville not too long ago. She was so impressed, she wants you to open for her Christmas show at the new concert theater in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. What do you say? Miranda asked over thunderous applause. Are you, are you, are you serious? Destiny pressed a fluttery hand against her throat. I, 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 mesmerized, Seth watched her as Sarah clutched his arm, shrieking, Can you believe it? No, I can't. Looks like she can't either. He knew Destiny had just made yet another giant leap towards stardom and away from him. But in this moment, he felt an overwhelming sense, sweeping sense of joy. On stage, Rex took the mic back from Miranda. Wow, this is amazing news. Congratulations, Destiny. How are you feeling right now? Well, I'm a huge fan of Tammy, so you can't begin to imagine how thrilled I am. And now Tammy Turner is a fan of yours, Rex commented. What do you think about that? It just blows me away. I, I'm so honored just knowing that she heard me sing, let alone this. Watching her, Seth moved by how humble Destiny was and said a silent prayer that she'd stay that way. Guess this means that she won't be coming home for Christmas after all, Sarah said low in his ear, and he nodded glumly. He could feel her looking at him, but he didn't dare catch her eye. You know, Seth, everything happens for a reason, Sarah said, even though you can't always figure it out until much later, sometimes years later. Destiny took one last bow, and the stage went dark. Think we can get backstage, Sarah asked. Hell yes, pardon my French, Sarah, Seth said. I just, I just can't wait to see her. I feel the same way. You push your way through, and I'll be right behind you. He started shouldering through the crowd, filled with familiar faces, the kids who called, Hi, Coach. He wondered how many people here knew that he and Destiny were, well, whatever they were. One person who definitely didn't was Tracy Gilmore. He saw her coming at him, looking flushed and pretty, and gave a little wave, but kept meant to keep his distance. She was still hinting around about getting together after hours, but she hadn't come right out and asked if he, if she had. Seth would have had a good reason to bring up the fact that he was seeing someone. It just didn't seem right to announce it out of the blue, even though he'd been involved with enough women in his day to know that Tracy was most definitely interested in him. Behind him, Sarah stopped to talk to someone who was wanting to gush about Destiny, leaving Seth two choices, abandon Destiny's mother or stop to right in Tracy's path. He stopped. No big deal. It wasn't as if Tracy was going to make a pass at him right here in public. Seth, wasn't she terrific? She asked. What? Destiny Hart, she was really something. That girl is going to go places. I'm so glad I let my nieces talk me into coming. Your nieces? Aunt Tracy, at their service, she pointed at the nearby gaggle of giggling, gossiping middle school girls. I'm babysitting while my brother and sister-in-law are out of town while I'm planning to talk to you about actually I couldn't find you after school on Wednesday. No, he bolted as soon as the kids was released that afternoon, wanting to get home and get things ready for Destiny's visit, not realizing that she wasn't going to get there until 2 a.m. You wanted to tell me about your brother and sister-in-law's date night? He asked Tracy incredulously. Isn't that a little strange? She laughed. Not really, and actually it's not a date night, or funny at the least. Tim and Joyce are splitting up, and I thought you might be interested. He's blinked. And your sister-in-law? Maybe he'd been mistaken about Tracy's attraction to him. No, in your brother? Clearly she had the wrong idea, too. Seth, you idiot, I'm talking about the house. She laughed and poked him on the chest. Oh, the house. They're getting ready to part. Uh, but to put it on the market, they're both anxious to get out and move on. It's a great house. If they could sell it without getting realtors involved, if it would be much easier and they pass the savings along to the buyer. You, if you're interested, are you? I'd have to see the house, but trust me, it's right up your alley. Brick, close to school, affordable, and it has a front porch. He smiled. Sounds good. I'll take a look. Great. I'll put you in touch with Tim. Do you still have my number? I do. Call me over the weekend and we'll set something up. I will. 
I'll call you, he promised, and she smiled and he moved on. He turned away to see Sarah watching, listening, and wearing a thoughtful and disappointed expression. I, uh, I work with her, he said hastily. She's going to, you don't have to explain anything to me, Seth. No, it's not what it, it, you think. Her brother is getting divorced and selling his house, and she thought it might be right for me. Sarah's troubled expression vanished, but only momentarily. Seth, if you're thinking about settling down with destiny, I'm not sure this is the time to. No, I know it isn't, he told her, not wanting to hear her say the words. I'm really happy for her. Sarah nodded. We all are. Come on, let's go find her and tell her. Seth resumed pushing through the crowd, desperately to believe, that even now, that he and Destiny were meant to be together. If they were, fate would find a way. And if they weren't, well, he figured fate would take care of that, too. That part just gets to me every time. Okay, we're moving on. Page 207. I feel sick. It's like joy, excitement and fear all wrapped into one tight little bundle of lodge somewhere in the pit of my stomach. Maybe you should just throw it up, Grace said, deadpan. Hey, when did you morph into me? That's something I would say, and get a warning look from Mom. I bet not. Mom's a prime example of what we can all change in the direction in our life at any age. Remember what Granny used to say about strong-minded women? She called them steel magnolias, Destiny recalled with a nod. Delicate on the outside but strong on the inside. Sounds like she was talking about the both of you, Max said. She steps, and he stepped closer to Grace, who sighed and looked again at his, her watch. We really do have to go, Destiny. I know, I know. She just gave one last look around, then lifted her chin and took a deep breath, announcing, I'm ready for anything, she added silently. I'm wanting to make sure I'm not missing the paper clips. This was such a good book. That's why I'm sharing so much of it with you. Okay, here we go. Page 227. The words sounded almost casual. Seth, however, looked anything but. She could see the hurt in his eyes. She could see the tension in his jaw. The slightest tremble in his hands. She, too, was trembling with fear and with anger too as something snapped inside of her so that's it then that's all you have to say that's how it goes what else do you want me to say destiny what else do you want me to do don't put it that way don't put it all on me what do you want to do it's not about all that i want it's about what it's not about what you want he cut in and she saw that he wasn't the only one angry here really i thought that was the whole point what are you talking about? What are you, what you want, Destiny? This. He waved a hand around being a here in Pigeon Forge and in Nashville and on the road. This is all about what you want, what you've always wanted. If you're trying to make me feel selfish, I'm not. Believe me, I'm not trying to make you feel anything that you don't feel. All I ask is what ask you was what you wanted me to do. Nothing, Seth, okay? I don't want you to do anything. He looked at her, shrugged and looked away. She swallowed hard. I really am exhausted. And I think, since you already have a room of your own, that you should go sleep there tonight. He turned back to meet her gaze again, and the sorrowful, sorrowful expression in his eyes told her everything. She didn't want to hear him say those words out loud because she couldn't say them herself. I'll head back in the morning, he told her. Back. Home to Wilmont. But, look, I just think it's be think it would be best, don't you? She nodded miserably. I'll take Mike with me. You don't have to. How are you going to take care of him here? She didn't reply. He was right. It wouldn't be fair to Mike. He deserved loving and attention and an outdoor space. He'll be fine with me for as long as you want him to stay. Pets are allowed and in the new house, too. Seth added with a hollow attempt at humor that fell flat between them. As soon as I'm settled back in Nashville, she taught Lee, I'll take him back. Are you sure about that? He's my dog, Seth. She reminded him, I know that. I meant, are you sure you're about the settled part? Because I'm betting things aren't gonna, are going to get crazier than ever with Cowgirl Up coming on the air and your single coming out. He was right. She knew that. I'll call my parents, arrange for them to keep Mike for a while, she told them, deciding on the spur of the moment. Why? Because I know you're busy with Chase in your house and your father will never go for a dog in the house. 
you don't know that, she pointed out, hating that he would say that, rather than assure her that he did have time for Mike and that for her. He never let you have one before. So people change, Seth. What is that supposed to mean? You expect me to change because I... We were talking about my father, she reminded him curtly, though they weren't entirely true and they both knew it. Okay, Seth said, I'll drop Mike with your parents when I get back to Wilmot. Thank you. They walked back to the suite. Hearing them, Mike stirred, looked up, and gave a happy little bark. Come on, fellow Seth said, let's go. Wait, Destiny scooped her dogs up and hugged him close. Mike, I'll be seeing you soon, okay? Remember, I love you. Seth stood by in silence. She couldn't even look at him, burying her face in Mike's soft fur for a long time. See you, Mike, she said, at last straightening and turning her, such a painful ache in her throat. Okay. So this is where um, Seth drops the dog off with her mother and Mr. Hart isn't there. If I've learned anything from my daughter, it's that you get one shot at this life, Sarah said, and you better make the most of it. She's doing what she has to do. I know that, and so am I, as you should. Congratulations on the new house, Destiny told me. Thank you. When are you moving in? As soon as possible. In fact, I'm heading over there right now to take some measurements. He cleared his throat, looked down at Mike. Listen, if the dog is too much trouble for you or Colonel Hart isn't happy about having him in the house, it's not too much trouble. And Colonel Hart doesn't know about it because Colonel Hart isn't here. He has left last night to go fishing. He left on Christmas? She shrugged. It was quiet around here without the girls. Not much of a holiday this year. Yeah, I know what you mean. Seth gave Mike one last pat, handed him over her along with his belongings. I've got a crate in the car for him, too. I'll get it. Seth, she, Mrs. Hart called out as he started away. He turned. Don't think that just because the timing isn't right now. Sorry. It won't be right someday. A lot can happen between now and someday, Mrs. Hart. Whew. That gets to me every time. Destiny sat gloomily staring at herself in the mirror. Makeup artist scrambled to find something to cover the circle's raw red skin around her eyes. My goodness, what's wrong? She looked up to see Tammy had settled into the chair beside her. Oh, nothing. I'm great. I'm not buying that what you're selling, girlfriend. Tammy lifted her chin. As a stylist draped a protective sheath beneath it, you look like you've been crying your little heart out. Maybe that's because I have. Let me guess. It's about Seth? Destiny nodded. So tell me, Sugar, what's going on? I realized on Christmas Eve that it would be better just to. She stopped to put her hand over her mouth. Let him go? He's a high school teacher, and I'm doing this. Destiny waved her hand around in the arc. How in the world can that possibly work? And I love her response. Goodness. Your love for each other has to rise above it. Instead of being together every day, you have to treasure the time that you do have together. That's so much easier said than done. Oh, sweetie, like I said, it isn't easy, but as long as he's supportive, you mean was. Uh-oh. We had an argument. He left, and I've been calling, but I can't get through to him. You left him a message? Yes. Then the ball is in his court. Destiny sighed. I keep thinking about how hectic things were when we he got here and after the show. I was pulled in every direction. So what else is new? But with Seth here, I felt so guilty every time something took me away from him. Erase the word from your vocabulary. Guilt is toxic. I'll try, she sighed. I think he's realizing that there might be too much to handle. Well, if he can't deal with it early on, then he surely won't be able to deal with it later in the game. Tammy put her hand on Destiny's shoulder and squeezed. I told you I'm a straight shooter. I know it's not what you wanted to hear, but Destiny swallowed hard, but maybe I needed to hear it. Oh, boy. Excuse me. Oh. oh.
my bed's a mess right now because I have gifts on there for Kenzie's birthday and Easter. Yes, we do Easter gifts. Really, I guess they'll be St. Patrick's Day gifts because Easter is in April, isn't it? Yeah. But we're going to do a little bit at Easter. They just don't know it yet. Okay. Page 243. And look what I've gained. Adoration from hundreds of people who don't even know me. But they knew and loved her music. That was what she wanted all along. And now she had it. Oh, goodness. Uh, John finally decides that it's plain stupid being away from his girls and from his wife on page 247. That's worth mentioning. Trust me, you want to read that part. Uh, 249. Destiny shrugged. I guess maybe I thought he'd send me a card. Oh, let's back up. We're going to go to page 248. And I don't know why I didn't mark page 248, but we are. Feeling hollow inside. Destiny waved and smiled at the throng of, as Grace pulled her along toward the front entrance, but she didn't realize that she was trembling until she was safely inside the employee dressing room and alone with her sister. Wow, she said, exhaling at last. Grace, I can't believe all those people. They aren't just people, Destiny. Grace reminded her as she leaned forward and put her hand on Destiny's shoulders. Those were your fans. You were allowed to call them that, you know. It just seems crazy. Why, Destiny, your single's on the radio. You've been on every radio station promo. Ra Sundial Records has a big banner bar barging your f bragging about you outside of their studio. For goodness sake, and your pretty face is plastered on the side of their metro buses. I know, I know, it's just all crazy. She looked down. What is it? Grace said gently. Destiny shrugged. It's just the crowd blew me away. No, it isn't. She looked up at her sister in surprise. It's Valentine's Day and you haven't heard from Seth in over six weeks. That's what it is. Destiny shrugged. I guess maybe I thought he'd send me a card or call or something. You didn't do anything about it either. But the ball's in his court, remember? It's up to him to get in touch. I didn't realize there was a rule book. Grace, she broke off a hearing a knock at the door. Come in, expecting Amy, Miranda, but it was Ralph Weston who walked into the room. I'm going to run out and say hello to Max, Grace said quickly. Ralph presented her with a dozen deep red roses. And uh, that part, I just wanted to read that part about the Valentine's Day part because it makes a point to say that there isn't always a rule book. One person can be better by saying I'm sorry and bending over backwards and just lending out an olive branch, if you will. And that gives hope. And those three greatest words went out on that. Faith, hope, and love, right? There's my little pulpit coaching from the day. Okay. Now we're going to move to page 255. Okay. Allow destiny... Okay. You have the power to change that now. How? What do you want me to do? Allow destiny... Grace and me to be ourselves. Love us for who we are and not who you want us to be, Sarah told him. That's the parents. I'm trying to do that. God help me, Sarah, I am. I love you so much. For a moment, his declaration made her melt. Then he added, I feel like I, you just don't understand me anymore. I don't understand you, she wiggled to a standing position. If you could just see what the way I feel about the way I do. Right back at you, John. Maybe you could see why I feel the way I do, too. I am trying. It's all we ever talk about, Sarah. You tell me how you're feeling and why it's all right to feel that way. That's why I'm feeling the wrong way to feel. And you don't admit that you're having a, don't you dare say it, John. She could hear him stand here once again. She was merely having a midlife crisis that would soon pass. Fine, I won't, he shook his head. And anyway, you're maybe having, maybe you're the one who's having one. Me, I'm fine. I'm the same as I've always been, Sarah, you're the one who's gone off the deep end. He turned on his heel and left the room. 
Hell's bells, that man is stubborn, Sarah mumbled to herself, shaking her head. I think that point proves that him and Destiny are like just cut from the same mold. Page 263. And so is your father. Don't get me wrong. I believe he would be supporting in all that you do, but I also realize his reasoning, however misguided and stubborn, comes from the love he has for you. I know that for a fact he misses you dearly. Destiny swallowed hard and said only, I hope you and Daddy can work things out. So do I. And you and Daddy, you and Seth too. Destiny's eyebrows shot up, but she said nothing. I want you to remember something, Destiny. Life is a journey, not a destination. There will be times when you fail. But honey, let me ask you this. Would you rather fail at something or never try and always wonder what might have been? Are you talking about my career? I'm talking about life. Standing up there on stage tonight at the Grand Ole Opry, you made that happen. You always made things happen and don't ever forget that. Page 270. Tracy Gilmore had accepted a coaching, teaching and coaching position in Lexington for the fall. Thank God. That's my own personal thing. It feels like the right thing to do, she told Seth. There's a lot to keep me here. My family, my condo, my friends, but this job offer came out of left field and I think I should grab it. So do I, Seth told her, filled with a curious blend of regret and relief. He knew that she deliberately hadn't named him as one of the things keeping her here in Wilmot, and he also knew that if he was wondering, he was going to amend that. He didn't, because the more time had passed, the more certain that he was that Tracy and he were just spinning their wheels for now anyway. It wasn't out of the question that he might be tempted down the road to revisit his attraction to Tracy. The chances that a great girl like her would be indefinitely av available were slim, and he knew that, but he couldn't let lead her on right now. Not when a part of him was still pining away for destiny. After the ceremony, he waited for Chase in the crowd by the lobby, and all around him proud, emotional parents embracing their children, most of whom didn't seem to grasp the milestone they just passed. They posed for pictures, poked fun at one each other's post motor boards, and made plans for parties later tonight. They have no idea, Seth thought. Nothing is ever going to be the same. Not in the way they think it, anyway. Okay. I like the way the boy that uh, he mentored Chase throws, uh, makes him really stop and think with this phrase right here. You did a lot more than that. Okay, uh, Seth shrugged. There's still too much credit. You did it yourself, Chase. All I did was encourage you. You did a lot more than that, Coach. You made those scouts come see me play. You made me study. You made me fill out applications. You made me stay here. You made it happen. Even as Chase said it, the echo of another voice Destiny's voice filled Seth's head. You have to make things happen, Seth, not sit back and wait for them to happen. Back then, he hadn't believed it. Maybe he did now. Yeah, so what are you going to do about it? Page 274. She could have told me, he thought grouchily, but then his daughter, no, both his daughters now, had distanced themselves, him and as deliberately as Sarah had. And whose fault is that? She wanted to think, he wanted to think it was Sarah's for some reason, but that wasn't easy nor right as it might once have been. Could it possibly have been in his own damn fault that no one was speaking to him? It could, and it was. John reached over and cranked up the radio so he wouldn't miss a word. He was going to listen to his daughter's interview. And then he was going to hop into that truck, hightail it home to see his family before it was too late. And now we're going to get to the Seth and Destiny part. A lot of you are going, I bet they didn't make it. At least I was. And I love this part. She shook her head at him. I was waiting for you to call back after Valentine's Day, but you never did. You knew I called. Of course I knew. 
He shrugged. I wasn't even sure you checked your own phone anymore. Now that, I mean, Destiny, your life is so different now. But I'm the same person. Looking into her eyes, he found somehow that incredibly easy to believe. But what about, he had to ask, Brody Ballard, are you and he... Are you kidding? No, he's just a friend, Seth, and you have to believe that because I do believe it because I know you wouldn't lie to me, he said simply. No, never. A moment of silence passed, then Seth suddenly couldn't help himself. With a little groan, he took a step closer and pulled Destiny into an embrace, kissing her hard. To his delight, she melted against him, and her breathy sigh made his heart pound harder. She tasted warm and sweet, and when he wrapped his arms around his neck, Seth threaded his fingers through his... his her thick hair and kissed her like there was no tomorrow. When he finally pulled back, he rested his forehead against hers and chuckled weakly. Now that's more like it, Destiny said in his ear. You got that right, he replied and hugged her even harder. What was I thinking? She shook her head. We're both to blame, Seth. And we've got a lot a lost time to make up for. He dipped his head and captured her mouth with his, then jumped as a car drove by and honked the horn. He looked up to see his elderly neighbor Mr. Babcock, grinning and waving behind the wheel. Oops, he said, I guess we're giving the neighbors something to talk about. Destiny laughed with him. Hey, this is Wilmot. They need something to talk about. Seth raised his head and kissed her lightly on the tip of her nose. True enough, but I get, better get you inside or we're going to really be the talk of town. Why is that? Because kissing isn't all I feel like doing. He admitted, then took her hand and then gave it a playful tug. Destiny tipped her head back and laughed and her hat fell to the ground, but her laughter trailed off when Seth looked into her eyes and simply had to kiss her yet again. Her eyes widened sl slightly and then fluttered shut. Okay, I'm getting so nervous. I'm getting ready to dump the book over. Okay, it looks like... Yep. That's the last part I'm going to share with you. I'm not even going to share the ending. I'm going to leave you wondering. I just dropped the book. Did Seth and Destiny make up? Did John and Sarah make up? And more importantly, why Nona Judd? Where's the second book? Anyway, um, that book, which I just dropped, is why Nona Judd's Restless Heart, and it's a must read because it gets a 20 on my book review. And that's outstanding, okay? Outstanding. It was a, something I could clearly see the Hallmark Channel picking it up and making it a movie, honestly. I got to be honest about that. It, it had that capability. There was nothing really over-sexual toned in the book. You could tell it had, was hinting at romance, yes, several times, but it would be a great uh, Hallmark movie. So maybe they want to get in touch with her about that book. Um, and it was just something I'd like to know what happened further. So keep that under your mind and under your hat. And if you don't know why, Nona, show her this video and tell her, way to go. And it gets a 20 from me. Must read.